in the heart of Pakistan's Baluchistan, a discovery sent shockwaves through the archaeological community in October 2000. A mummy, adorned with a cuneiform-inscribed gold plaque, was identified as a 2,600-year-old Persian princess. But as the tale unraveled, the world would come to realize that not everything is as it seems. In October of 2000, in the bustling streets of Karachi, whispers of an extraordinary artifact began to circulate. At the heart of these rumors was a videotape, a seemingly innocuous piece of evidence that would soon unravel a tale of intrigue and deception. Ali Akbar, a local resident, had come into possession of this tape. The recording showcased a mummy, ancient and ornate, which Akbar confidently claimed to be selling. The tape caught the attention of Pakistani authorities, who, sensing the gravity of the find, acted swiftly. Their investigation led them to the remote town of Karan in Baluchistan, a region known for its rugged landscapes and proximity to the tumultuous Afghanistan border. Here, in the house of tribal leader Wali Muhammad Riki, the mummy was found. Riki's story added another layer to the mystery. He claimed the mummy was a gift from an Iranian, Sharif Shah Baki. Baki, according to Riki, had stumbled upon the mummy after an earthquake in a neighboring Iranian town. The two had entered into an agreement to sell this priceless artifact and share the profits. But this wasn't a simple sale. The mummy was being clandestinely offered in the shadowy world of the black antiquities market. The asking price? A staggering 600 million rupees, equivalent to 11 million US dollars. Such a sum was indicative of the artifact's perceived value and the potential historical significance it held. As word spread, the mummy became the epicenter of a whirlwind of speculation, intrigue, and international attention. But as the world would soon discover, the shadows concealed more than just a mummy. Amidst the swirling rumors and intense scrutiny, the mummy was finally unveiled to the world. And what a sight it was. It wasn't just an artifact, it was a story, a window into a bygone era of opulence and grandeur. The mummy lay in repose, reminiscent of the great Egyptian pharaohs. Its wrappings, meticulously done in the traditional Egyptian style, whispered tales of ancient embalmers who once practiced their art with reverence. The body was encased in a magnificent wooden coffin, its surface gleaming with gold. But what truly captured the eye were the intricate cuneiform carvings that adorned it. These ancient script markings, often associated with the Mesopotamian region, hinted at the mummy's possible Persian origins. Adding to the enigma was the image of the Faravahar, intricately carved into the coffin. The Faravahar, a winged disc with a human figure, is a symbol deeply rooted in Persian culture, often associated with Zoroastrianism, one of the world's oldest monotheistic religions. Its presence here was a powerful statement linking the mummy to the lineage of Persian royalty. But the mummy's grandeur didn't end there. Resting atop its chest was a layer of wax and honey, preservation methods that spoke of ancient embalming techniques. Yet the most compelling clue to her identity lay on a golden chest plate. An inscription etched with precision declared her to be Urodogun. The name itself evokes images of grand palaces and vast empires. Rodogun, as the inscription proclaimed, was no ordinary individual. She was a daughter of the mighty King Xerxes I of Persia, a ruler whose reign was marked by conquests and monumental architectural feats. As the world gazed upon the Persian princess, questions arose. How did she come to be mummified in the Egyptian style? What journey had she undertaken to end up in the rugged terrains of Baluchistan? The mummy, in all its splendor, promised answers, but as many would soon discover, it also concealed deep and dark secrets. As word of the mummy's discovery rippled across the globe, it quickly became the epicenter of an intense international debate. The Persian princess, as she was now known, wasn't just an archaeological find. She became a symbol of national identity, heritage, and pride. Iran was the first to stake its claim. The Iranian Cultural Heritage Organization, recognizing the mummy's potential ties to ancient Persia, saw her as a direct link to their storied past. They argued that if the mummy was indeed Rodogun, a member of the Persian royal family, she rightfully belonged to the land of her ancestors. 
The organization fervently demanded her return, viewing her not just as an artifact, but as a piece of their national heritage that had been lost to time. Pakistan, however, had a different perspective. The mummy had been discovered within their borders, in the rugged terrain of Baluchistan. To them, this fact alone solidified their claim to the artifact. Normally, in Pakistan, we do not have mummies at all. They must have come from outside. People say that probably they have come from Iran to Pakistan. But in Iran also, we do not have mummies at all. Mummies are known only from Egypt. The mummy, they argued, was a testament to the rich tapestry of cultures and histories that had intertwined in the region over millennia. Pakistan saw the mummy as a beacon of their own historical significance and were unwilling to part with such a monumental discovery. But the dispute didn't end there. The Taliban of Afghanistan, ever opportunistic, saw the mummy as a potential symbol of power and influence. Their claim added another layer of complexity to an already heated debate. While their stake might have seemed unexpected, it underscored the mummy's growing importance in the region. The Persian princess, once resting silently in a remote corner of Baluchistan, was now at the heart of a geopolitical storm. Nations vied for her, each seeing in her a reflection of their own history, pride, and identity. The tug of war that ensued wasn't just about an artifact. It was a battle for heritage, identity, and the right to narrate a chapter of history. As the world's attention remained fixated on the mummy, a cadre of experts began their meticulous examination. Their goal was to authenticate the artifact, to confirm the tales of ancient royalty and grandeur. But as they delved deeper, the narrative began to fray at the edges. Oscar White Muscarella, a renowned American archaeologist, was among the first to voice his doubts. He recalled an uncanny encounter earlier that year when he was shown photographs of a mummy bearing a striking resemblance to the Persian princess. This revelation raised unsettling questions. Was it possible that there were two such mummies, or was the Persian princess not as unique as initially believed? The inscriptions on the mummy's breastplate, which should have been a testament to her identity, further deepened the mystery. Scholars noted that the script was not in proper grammatical Persian. A glaring inconsistency was the use of the name Rodogun, the Greek rendition of the princess's name, instead of the authentic Persian form Waradagona. This mix of Greek and Persian elements was puzzling, to say the least. But the most telling discrepancies came to light through modern technology. CAT and X-ray scans, tools that allowed experts a glimpse into the mummy's past without disturbing her rest, revealed anomalies in the mummification process. The techniques used didn't align with the meticulous methods employed by ancient Egyptian embalmers. One of the most jarring findings was the absence of the heart. In traditional Egyptian mummification, the heart was considered the seat of the soul, and it was left intact within the body. Yet in the case of the Persian princess, it had been conspicuously removed. These inconsistencies cast a shadow of doubt over the mummy's authenticity. The world had been captivated by the tale of an ancient Persian princess, but as the evidence mounted, it became clear that the story was far more complex than it first appeared. The Persian princess was not just a historical artifact, she was now the centerpiece of a mystery that spanned cultures, continents, and millennia. In April of 2001, in the midst of the international tug of war and the mounting inconsistencies surrounding the mummy, Asma Ibrahim, the esteemed curator of the National Museum of Pakistan, took it upon herself to uncover the truth. Known for her dedication and expertise, Ibrahim approached the mystery with a keen eye and an open mind. What she uncovered was far more sinister than anyone had anticipated. The Persian princess, once believed to be an ancient relic, was revealed to be a much more recent entity. Through rigorous examination, Ibrahim determined that the mummy was, in fact, the remains of a young woman aged between 21 and 25. But the most shocking revelation was the time of her death, a mere few years prior, around 1996. The nature of her death was equally disturbing. Evidence suggested a violent end with indications of trauma possibly inflicted by a blunt instrument to her lower back. Further examination revealed that her teeth had been removed post-mortem, 
a grim detail that hinted at the lengths the forgers went to in their deception. The body had been tampered with extensively, hollowed out and filled with a powdery substance to give it the appearance of age and desiccation. But the implications of Ibrahim's findings were far-reaching. This was not merely a case of historical forgery. It raised the harrowing possibility of a murder. The mummy, once a symbol of national pride, was now a grim testament to a heinous crime. Investigators building on Ibrahim's revelations pieced together a chilling theory. They believed that the forgers, in their quest for authenticity, had sought out a fresh corpse. The source of this body was speculated to be grave robbers or other nefarious means. Once acquired, the body underwent a gruesome transformation. Internal organs were meticulously removed, and the body was treated with an array of chemicals to simulate the ancient mummification process. This macabre endeavor would not have been the work of amateurs. It would have required the expertise of individuals well-versed in historical practices, as well as someone with a profound understanding of human anatomy. The Persian princess, once a beacon of historical significance, had become a haunting reminder of the depths of human deceit and the dark underbelly of the antiquities trade. The Mummy's Tale took another turn in 2005. The ED Foundation, a nonprofit social welfare program in Pakistan, announced plans to inter the body with proper burial rites. However, bureaucratic delays meant the burial only took place in 2008. The saga of the Persian princess is a testament to the lengths people will go for wealth and recognition. It's a story that intertwines history, crime, and international politics. While the mummy may not be the ancient relic it was once believed to be, its story serves as a cautionary tale about the allure of the unknown and the dangers of taking things at face value. In a world where the past often holds the key to the future, the Persian princess will forever be a reminder of the thin line between fact and fiction.